Welcome to the Fantasy Formula Podcast. I'm Paul. That's Ben. And uh, this is the podcast where we use fake money to buy real racing teams to win imaginary points. There it is. And we're going to kick it right off with the top three takeaways from Italy this week. First off is that Max Verstappen equals Red Bull. Absolutely. We, I mean, we knew, we knew he was a dominant racer, but... It always felt like a like a, a solid team effort, you know. It was yeah. like Max, and then you know also uh, Perez is there, you know, being that being that rock for him. And yeah, I don't know if that's so much the case anymore. He was the second place last year. He was the second place in the drivers' championship, and you can't take that away from him. That oh, if no. there's anybody else on his team, like if on Red Bull, you have the number one and number two in the world, so that equals positive. Yep. But you have to ask yourself, and this was put out in the news, is you know these cars are so dominant is Perez the right person to be driving a Red Bull who else would be doing better with the Red Bull and as soon as qualifying matters like it does here he finishes what eighth well and, and, and that's exactly it we know we talked uh, a couple weeks ago about uh, Valtteri Bottas Bottas, yes, Bottas. Bottas. Yeah. and uh, <laughs> he was he was kind of he was the number two driver at Mercedes for several years you know yeah. right behind Lewis Hamilton runner up for the driver's champion a couple times and now he's kicked Sauber and he's 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 not part of the conversation yeah I you know I wonder how telling this race is for Sergio Perez in terms of if he was not in that Red Bull car. That's true. If he was somewhere else, you know, how would he be doing? No, for sure. How 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 replaceable is he? Because and when, from a fantasy perspective, as soon as Perez has a day like he had, you no, know, in 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 Italy last weekend, then Max Verstappen basically makes it Red Bull fantasy wise as good as your Ferraris and your McLarens. Yeah, like he he carries the team. So as soon as he's carrying the team, and then when you know Perez does really good, then now oh look, so, they're so wonderful fantasy wise. But as soon as Perez do, Perez does how Perez normally does, right? Well, now suddenly your Max Verstappen and your Red Bull are just as good ish as fantasy wise as your Ferraris and your McLarens. Absolutely. So. It, this this um this week gives me a, a new appreciation for the McLarens and the yeah. Ferraris of of the of the grid here, where you have two drivers who who kind of equally want it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's that's kind of a powerful thing to have. It's kind of sad to see see that breaking up with Ferrari, and it, it's interesting to me because you know we were we've been speculating so much on oh where's Carlos Sainz going to go, yeah, um, and we thought that you know there was potentially that home that he was going to land with with Kick Sauber, which is turning into uh, Audi mm-hmm. uh, for the next couple of years, but since he's not going to end up there, does the does this to you reignite the conversation that we could see Carlos Sainz in a Red Bull uniform next year? Because he I mean, he has a history with Red Bull. Yeah, and now and now we're seeing that that uh, Perez is. I mean, he's capable, but he's not an earth shaking driver. How about this? I to answer that question with a non answer. I think it has to. Yes, but it kind of depends because the only reason. How about this? The only reason. Car, a driver of the caliber of Carlos Sainz doesn't already have something decided. Yeah, is if he's holding out. Is if there's some question mark in the universe, either for the team he wants to go for, or for uh, the in his brain as to other other. Uh, there's a question mark based on the the team doesn't know who they want. Yeah, or he's kind of curious to see how much he'll get offered from a team, and if there's amb- ambigu- ambiguity there, it has to be because. There's since the questions aren't answered, who in the field is better or at least contemporaries with Ferrari and has a lot of question marks hanging over him? Sure, it's Red Bull because first off is Perez, you know the the driver we want that Red Bull wants him to be, but also what's Max doing? Because I don't know where all this quit these questions are coming from as to if Max is staying or if Max is going, but with uh, all the changes going on with Red Bull, I could very easily say that was a long answer to say I could very easily see. Carlos Sainz sitting here going, hey, man, I'm going to wait and see what happens with Red Bull and see what they offer me and see how that works out. Yeah. Because otherwise, Haas, any of your bottom five constructors would give uh, would give a uh, appendix to get Carlos Sainz. On oh, sure. Team, you know, oh, sure. and, and, and that's but that's that's what's so perplexing to me, though. I feel like given what what Sainz wants to accomplish in the remainder of his career. Yeah. Going to a lower mid tier constructor. Just feels like so many steps backwards sure. in that regard. Like if you look what, um, yeah, you know, look, you know, look at look at Botas. Uh, B- B- I can't say his last name. Botas. Botas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, he he ha- he has a fantastic pedigree as as, yeah. a, as a as a driver, but but look what he's dealing with now. 
you know, and so does science want to, I mean, again, it, it would have to be a huge financial enticement to, to, to go to something like that. I completely agree. And he's, you know, obviously he's leaving Ferrari. Um, I guess, you know, Mercedes is a potential landing spot. Yeah. But, I, uh, and then, uh, or unless, you know, uh, in, you know, if, if Lawrence Stroll wants to cut ties with his, his son, maybe, maybe Aston Martin is a viable option, but I don't see that happening. No, I, I I think you hit it. I think you hit it. I think maybe Aston Martin, fine, maybe. Or, or then, or, or then, if Red Bull doesn't offer, he goes back and says, "Hey, Audi. Hey, Audi. Let's, 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 yeah, we can talk again. We can talk. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see that. Maybe Audi, if they offered him enough. Maybe Aston Martin, if they offer some. But otherwise, he's looking at Mercedes. He's looking at McLaren. He's looking at Red Bull. McLaren's shoring up. I was going to say, doing anything. Th- does McLaren have a spot? No, they're not they're, looking. They're why, happy. Why with would their you guys. move away from? Oh, from you wouldn't. Norris or Piastri? Excuse no. Me. So McLaren's off the table. There's open there's open seats at Mercedes. Yeah. There's open seats. There might be open seats at Red Bull. So he has to be looking at one of those. There has to be something in the wind about that. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise he's just wasting his time, and I don't see him doing that. Oh, for sure. Next for the top three takeaways is that McLaren is here to stay. Absolutely. They're not going anywhere. I know we had talked about last podcast about, well, if they win three, you know, stuff like that. But you, we were talking about on the prep for this that, that uh, Lando Norris has. He won what? P2, he got P2, P3, P2, P1, P2 yeah. in the last three races. And uh, it, it was last week. You asked me. You said, "What would it take to, for me to 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 swap out uh, to swap out uh, racers on on one of my fantasy teams?" Yeah. And I said, "He'd he'd have to podium at least three times consecutively." So he just did. So oh, no, I mean, no, no. So it it was after that. It, it was it was three times following that initial one. So oh, okay. if, if he podiums though this time, I'm then I'm on the Lando train. He's worth he's worth that that. Uh, premium price that yeah. the the FIA has has put on on their on their fantasy league. Uh, I think it's twenty four point nine million right now. Yeah, like a quarter which is thing, which is a lot. But again, if you've been you know using Perez, who's been consistent but not much better than consistent, especially mm-hmm. with this this very underperforming week on his end. I I, th- I think as of next week, that's a reasonable trade off. So you can see I'm wearing the orange today. <laughs> um, this is not Formula One. This is Reebok. I got this on sale at Walmart, <laughs> but it's orange. So you know, I'm I'm uh, call me a bandwagoner. But, Absolutely, you know, no, uh, I'm down. Yeah, man. Let's uh, let, you know, because and, and and now you know, McLaren is not even. They're not pulling up to Mercedes. They are they're well beyond Mercedes in terms yeah. of of constructor points on the non fantasy side. I'm sorry, I should specify, but like they are in a very comfortable third place for the constructors championship for sure. right now. Like it, it's it's. They they have made some strides, and it, and these are not fluke wins. These are not everyone else crashed, and and one of the orange cars didn't. Yeah, this is this is skillful driving. This is impactful upgrades. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we we heard Ferrari talking o- over the last week or so, saying, "Oh, these Amola upgrades are going to be great." But guess what? McLaren's upgrades they yeah. mattered too. You know, and, and I, why I was saying that, I just kind of realized when you were talking about where Lando was in like in in P one P two. As soon as you have Max Verstappen, who's consistently P1, yeah, and his teammate, who's somewhere, yeah, he might get up to P2, but he's really anywhere between P2 and P8 at this point. Right. A lot of, like, average is probably P5, P6. Yeah. Well, now, as soon as you get Lando Norris in P1, P2, and his teammate is just as good as Sergio Perez, except maybe his average might even be start to be a little higher over the- That's Ferrari's wheelhouse, yeah, exactly. Then-, then then yeah, and then now you suddenly have McLaren. Now you have to have to talk about McLaren in the same breath as Ferrari and as Red Bull, at least as far as fantasy goes. Like right. I understand in the real in the real world, which we'll get to that later. Sure, but well, and, you know, and and I, I think that makes that raises a really good point, and that Red Bull is starting to have that issue that uh, that Aston Martin has. This is a bad week to bring it up, and we'll hit more on that later. But typically, you're seeing a huge gap in driver skill sets between mm-hmm. Alonso um, and Stroll, where Alonzo will get seventh place. Stroll will be hanging out down at fourteenth, thirteenth yeah. place, and so you're seeing that in, in the in the upper echelon here. And so you you wonder how long they can sustain they can sustain their constructor team lead, um, or points lead with that gap. It's true. And so that's that'll be that'll be interesting yeah. to watch. The next of the top three takeaways is Haas. Yeah. Let, let me say that a better way. Haas semicolon two fifths of the winning fantasy Formula One team. Yes. Because they do not have like there's only they only have one race, Bahrain, where one of the drivers took negative points. They have zero DNFs. They have zero every weekend they get you something. So there's multi facets to this, but the big one is you don't have to worry about them. There'll be pluses, there'll be the minuses, and overall they'll finish 
in the in the black. Yeah. You from a fantasy perspective, you have to have to have to have Haas on your team because they are the most reliable over the last six races. And I'll, I'll break it down a little further for the layman like me. Um, this week, they got 11th. Uh, Hulkenberg got 11th. Magnussen got 12th. Not impressive. Not in the points on uh, you know on your typical yeah. Grand Prix weekend. Um, but w- as you're putting your fantasy team together, you put you get your two high dollar constructors, you get your high dollar racer, and then you've got four you know four drivers left and not a lot of money. Yeah, Haas is cheap. And they are consistent, and that they will get you a few points every week. Um, we, we were lo- we were looking through the performance so far, and I think we've only got one DNF between both drivers all season so mm-hmm. far. And it was Hulkenberg in Bahrain season opener. What did he get the for? He lost six race positions, so he finished. He ra- he qualified. He qualified tenth, got a point for it, and he finished sixteenth. Right. And typically, what you're going to want is your high dollar drivers to score you a lot of points. And your cheap drivers, your 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 discount barrel bin drivers, you want to make sure you just want them not to lose you points. Correct. But but Haas, they they get you a little pocket change. They find they find that change between the couch cushions every week for you. (laughs) And and you you know what? You still might have five million dollars left over in your budget. Don't trade up. Don't don't go Alpine or don't go you know Mm Kicksaber because they're a little more no not Kicksaber but uh, um. Don't don't go with those lower mid tier constructors because they're they're not getting the points and they're and their their value per million dollars that that Paul is able to calculate out just isn't there. So you're spending yeah. that extra money, it's not going to show up on your balance sheet. No, and and it, and you get you that sense. I don't know about anybody else in this life. I love. There's some parts of the game I want to try and gamble on, like which we'll oh, get sure. to later. Oh, is it Ferrari is at Red Bull this week. What do we do? Yeah, but I hate sitting there worrying about. Oh my gosh, and that's why I didn't put you know Botas or or uh, Jorgen you back on it. For this week was because I was like, man, they got negative points last week. I don't want. Am I going to lose points by having these people on here? Right. You know, and and for me, if I the more more of that I can get rid of for my fantasy team, the happier I am. I can focus my time and effort, my thinking on the other drivers. For me, Haas are the two the two Haas drivers. Don't go for the constructor because they're not going to get you any points. Oh, not at all. Which I did this weekend, and we can talk about that. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, but for both of the drivers, they're perfect to have on your team. The next segment, our countryman Logan. So, Logan had a fine weekend. He's for some reason DNF'd qualifying. D- do not finishing a qualifying. You get negative five points, not twenty. Okay, so I it's only ne- yeah, okay. only negative five points. And the killer part is, is that in order to DNF a qualification, you have to not put a timed lap on in Q one. So if you if I decide to go for Q1 and I get a slow time on, right? We're talking barely legal time, just slow time. I still by definition qualified and I don't need to race Q2, Q3. I'm done. As soon as, you, as soon as you get the best time in Q1 and you move on to Q2 and then you decide not to qualify in Q2, that's, that might be considered a DNF, but it's not for the fantasy perspective. So what Logan Sargent did is he didn't even do qualifying. And this is where we're going to reach out to y'all in TV land shows my generation when I call it TV land <laughs> is that I don't know why he DNF'd. I looked at it. I did research on it. Yeah. I could not. I missed it when I was watching it. I have no clue what happened with Logan Sargent and why he didn't uh, didn't put a time up in uh, Q1. Yeah. But that, you know, that still led to him getting a cumulative total of negative two points if he's on your fantasy team. Yep. Which means he would have only gotten you positive three points. If he it just qualified at the back of the pack. Right. And one of those points was because Alex Albin can't they couldn't put on his tires. And so right. he was a DNF. And so like he would have gotten you two points on merit. But for some reason he just didn't qualify. So yep. if anybody out there knows why Logan Sargent didn't qualify, yeah, let us know. We couldn't find let us it. No. Yeah. The next segment, what the Fernando? Oh man. I mean Fernando Alonso, two time two time driver's champion. Uh, fantastic hair, right? You know, God. Taylor Swift like, writing Taylor songs Swift about writing him. Songs about him, <laughs> but <sighs> he ends up in in nineteenth place. Yeah. So here are the notes I took. Please let me know if I missed something. And we and we all know I like this guy way way more oh, than Lance Stroll. Absolutely. You know? We are. I'm a huge fan of Fernando Alonso. I'm a huge fan of hating on Lance Stroll. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> so Fernando Alonso crashes during practice. Got it. Everybody was off the track. Max Verstappen. We'll, I'm not trying to get ahead, but Max Verstappen's 
being cheeky here, spent half his time off the track, all right, in yeah. the practices. And th- this was FP3 that he crashed this, on, right? Yes, FP3. I okay. Think, I think it was FP3. Yeah, it was. So he he crashed. It wasn't bad. Didn't look too bad. I wasn't sitting in the car that went into the barriers, so I don't know. That'd be, that'd be pretty that'd awesome, That'd be pretty though, right? sick, though. Yeah. Uh, so then he, then he had to... I forget how well he qualified, but they had to do adjustments to the car, and he qu- started in, uh, in as I feel if it was the back of the grid or if it was pit lane. I forget which one he started, but the punchline is he started in the back. Oh, no, he started He started in the... Nope, that was... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I got my drivers crossed here. Yeah, let me I see. I think he started in the pit. Might have started. Nope. So, so yeah, Yes, he did. And, he, he, he started no, in the pit. It was him. He started in the pits. Okay. And for... Okay, so real quick, for all you out there in TV land... If a driver has any work done on their car after the ra- after the start of qualifying, it used to be back in the day, you would have your qualifying car and your racing car. The Formula One got rid of that because then you'd have the rich teams that had a qualifying car, and then you have the poor teams that only had one car, and they had to set it up for one or the other. So what they do now is they say, you only have one car, and you can only touch, you only work on your car so many hours, and you'll hear them you throw on words like breaking curfew, and so if they work too long on their car or if they uh, work on things too deep, they do too many modifications in between qualifying and practice. Depending on what you do, you if you do a little much but not too much, then you'll take a grid penalty for it. They'll say, fine, you have to start at the back of the grid or fine, you just lose two or three places off whatever you qualified in. If you do enough, which is what happened to Fernando, like let's say, I don't know, you crash, and then when they're looking at your car afterward, they're like, hey, you did some damage to this. We need to change your engine. We need to change your gearbox, stuff like this. Then they will have you start in pit lane. Yep. The reason why you don't like starting in pit lane versus back of the pack, if you start in the back of the pack, then you still do the warm-up lap with everybody. But then when the whole line comes up to line up on the grid, you duck into the pits and you sit at, at the end of pit lane at a dead stop with your tires cooling off, lights go out, everyone takes off. When the last car passes the end of pit lane, that's when you start from a dead stop. I got you. Okay. And so it's a huge detractor. However, as soon as you know you're not going to be competitive anyway because your car's jacked up or some, you got something wrong, then you go ahead and change whatever you want to and you start at the pit lane and it just negates qualifying. Okay. Hey, I appreciate the exposition on that because I was yeah. today years old when I found out you could start a race from pit lane <laughs> and that <laughs> totally just kind of wrecked my world a little bit. Um, but well, you know, while you were talking, I did look it up. He also did uh, qualify at 19th. So Okay. See, oh, then that would make a lot more sense then if he qualifies at 19th and they're like, hey, this car isn't working. Let's change what we need to just to try and get something out of it or to get more testing out of it. I think they were, there was, they were, they had thrown around a little bit like it was basically like an extended testing form or well, something. And that's right? what, that's what's great about Fernando and, and his, his experience. Dude's 42 years old. He's signed for an, another couple of years and he's definitely taking a stance of, I've been around, I've seen it all. Let's, let's, let's take the emotion out of it a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Car is obviously not going to go well. We can, we can call Amola a healthy scratch for us. Like, yeah. th- th- we're not going to get points today. Let's see what this car can do. And and take some lessons from it. Let's get some footage. Let's let's mm-hmm. you know make sure make sure we bring some some data back for our engineers to, to work with before next week. Gotcha. So so he raced, you know he uh, he he got up to speed. There was a little fire in his brakes. Yeah, and, that and was like, the- it went out as it, <laughs> as he got up to speed, and it was like let let let's see what it can do. Let's see what has worked, what is not working, and that way we actually have something substantive to work with. So yeah, cool perspective and. Uh, but that's yeah, that's what what happened with Fernando Alonso who at, at P nineteen. And I would love just to reemphasize that. So this guy was in the pits, he was leaving the pits, or for some reason, and his brakes were on fire. Yeah. And this is me being cheeky, but he was like, "Nah, don't worry about it, guys. I'm just gonna get up speed. Break, don't worry, the brakes will go out." Like how how much would I be freaking out if my car was on fire and he just like goes ahead and gets up to speed and the air extinguishes his brake fire? Yeah. To me, that just blows my mind. But it's awesome. So. Uh, poor, poor uh, but again, again, part of that, uh, one of the takeaways from a fantasy perspective you can take yeah. is, you know, um, Aston Martin has not fully figured out their upgrades yet. And we know, and again, they're, they're that middle of the tier, middle of the road team that you already want to avoid from a, from a, a value perspective. Mm-hmm. But right now, even if you really like that dark green color, they're not going to, they're not going to serve you well. Yeah. So, so avoid, uh, avoid until they, they get their, their kinks ironed out. And I went ahead and we're going to talk about this here in uh, the next segment or two. 
I had Fernando on my primary team. Oh, no. I did. I did. I knew. I, we'll get into it later. I don't want to get into it right now. Stay tuned. But through a bunch of, uh, you know what, this will work. Yeah, let's, 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 let's be gutsy and here we go. I had Fernando Alonso. So oh, I, I was man. slowly dying as the week progressed. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so we talked about uh, Fernando. What the Fernando. Next is fantasy versus reality. This is an interesting segment. Yes. Because, you know... It, we these these talking points have come up as as the season has gone on and it's just incredible how stark of a difference in lenses you have to watch formula one through mm-hmm. whether you know if you're just if you're just watching the races and and you're you're rooting for your driver or you're rooting for a constructor based on the points that they that they achieve it's one thing you're watching an entirely different race if you're thinking from a fantasy perspective yeah um and uh, you know, and and there are there are two teams this week. You know, every couple of weeks we'll bring this segment up to talk about just just how fundamentally different those things are. We have two examples this week. One is with uh, RB Racing, or or I'm sorry, V Car Racing. Yeah, God, I hate that name. Um, or a, a, as well as Ferrari. Yeah, I'm gonna jump on Ferrari real quick. Let's do it. So this is Ferrari's home track. Yes. Okay. And I I don't know whether I just got seduced by the hype. Or if I genuinely thought what was going on, I thought I was in touch with everything and I just ended up not being in touch with it. So Max Verstappen had horrible practices. He was not doing well. He was off the track. He was unhappy, all of this. Perez was not doing all that bang up of a job. Right. Ferrari was doing strong. McLaren was doing strong. And I, w- I got the idea to go to use my 3X chip for Ferrari this weekend. I got both of the drive. I got both Ferrari drivers. Gave uh, Leclerc three X, Signs a two X, because you can't stack them. I had Ferrari, and then I put Haas on. Okay. Because I didn't trust V Carb to not break my heart. Haas, sure. They're not going to get you a lot of points, but okay. And I got Fernando Alonso on there because I had the money for him. And so what happened? It I did not do. All that well. So my team that I put, where did it go here? So my team that I put them on got 195 fantasy points, which last week, just in qualifying and in the sprint race, I had 150 fantasy points. Yep. So it was really, really rough for me. The I got the, I got 72 points from Leclerc with a 3x, which for anybody playing at home, standard Max Verstappen 2x is 80. Yeah. So it did not work out for me because I really bought into the hype. I thought Ferrari was going to do well. They have got P3 and they got P5. Oh, and, and, and so and this and is this, where the, this is your snapshot yeah. of, of fantasy versus reality. P3 and P5. Ferrari fans it's rejoice. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. P3 and P5, if you have both Ferrari drivers on your team... Is not awesome. It's not, Espe- and especially if you've used your three X chip, which mm-hmm. is you know that's done for the season, baby. Yep. You know, like lots of lots of points left on the table there. Yeah, yeah. So and it was just, and I'm watching in my family because I'm watching with my family. They're super stoked for McLaren and Logan, and I'm just uh, uh, Lando Norris, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, uh, in reality, I want him to win. I think that'd be great. I want yeah. him to put it to Max Verstappen. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have the race in the fantasy world. Well, I don't have you no know, Lando Norris on my team. I don't want him to win. I want I want him to spin out. And I want Ferrari to take P1 and P2. Right. Because that would help me the best here. And then I look and Ferrari isn't even in the conversation for a win. And so the fantasy part of it is me just scratching my head going, oh, what have I done? The reality part of it is like, hey, I'm really glad for the guys who are winning. Sure. And Ferrari, they're doing just fine. Constructor-wise, they're still in it. Well, and, you know, and the, the logic was there to take this kind of a risk just mm-hmm. because, you know, because you'd made, you'd you'd uh, reference this possibility last week because I ended up fo- following your lead on this. I'm, I'm not bitter because, again, it was a calculated risk. Um, we, we see McLaren doing better and better. Yeah. We see them being a disruptor potentially to Red Bull. Mm-hmm. And 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 you have them more in that conversation alongside Ferrari, where you have two strong constructors, each with a strong vehicle. They just don't happen to have Max Verstappen. Yeah. And now we're going to Italy. There's maybe maybe that little bit of home field. Yeah. You know, cause, yeah. Cause, they're you know, bringing the, the upgrade. Yeah. So uh, so again, I I get taking the risk to to triple down on Ferrari. Mm-hmm. You know, two drivers right. and a constructor and your three X. You could have killed it. Yes. It could have, but instead I died. And so, and again, but it, with, <laughs> with any calculated risk, there is still risk. Which is so. the fun part of this game. I'm not that bitter. I was just like, oh man, here we go. Yeah. And the second part of fantasy versus reality is V carb. Yes. So V carb is 
Daniel Ricardo and, and Yuki, Yuki Sonoda. And so let's look first through the lens of I like Formula One and I don't play fantasy Formula One. Qualifying at Amola, Yuki Sonoda qualifies at seventh place. And start and uh, yeah, Daniel Ricardo ninth qualifies at ninth. That's awesome because guess what? You know, so you have this. These these are the you know the the cast off you know or you know orphan constructors kind of. And so when they when they're starting off well in the points, yeah, like you know what, you lose a spot or two, that's fine. You're still you know you have a chance to get points for your for your constructor. You're kind of sticking it to the higher you know the 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 higher budget you know higher performing mm-hmm. teams. It's the, the underdog factor. It's so much fun. So much fun. And it's good for everybody to have there be different teams in the top 10. It's good for the for the teams to be there. It's good for the competition. Oh, my gosh. Is Max Verstappen under threat from VCARB? Right. Huge. And it's wonderful. Then you th- then you watch from a fantasy perspective. Wah, wah. And you go from qualifying 7th and 9th to finishing the race 10th and 13th. Again, not a bad spot. Not a bad spot overall, you know, just from a race perspective, but not. But you have now drivers who have lost positions. They didn't crash. Their their cars didn't catch fire. You know, um, Danny Ricardo actually finished a lot. This is one of his better finishes yeah. on the year. But as a fantasy driver, if he's on your team, he was negative two points because of the overtakes on him. Yep. So if he had started P twenty. And just not qualified, qualified at the back of the pack, yeah, and gotten up to thirteenth. We would be singing his name from the rooftops because he'd have gotten seven points. Absolutely, but because to your point, he qualified so well, yay! And then he got yeah. back to thirteenth. I'd I'd rather see him start P eighteen, yeah. go to P fifteen, get me some points. But um, in fantasy, in reality, we are super stoked for him. Yeah, that was that great. He got the top ten, good for you. Oh yeah. uh, no, he, he got thirteen. So he got, but no, when he qualified in the top oh, 10. That he, sorry, no, ex- absolutely, that's huge. Yeah, so happy for him. So, so just, just take note though, as as you know, if you're listening to this and you're not doing fantasy Formula One, I'm thoroughly confused. If, <laughs> if, but if you are, these these are the kind of red you know red flags that don't jump out right away. Yeah. But, but if you if you have a a Williams, uh, a Haas, a uh, V Carb, a Kick Sauber, and and you're starting, and that driver's starting P eight, P nine. If they're on your team, suddenly their existence is a liability for yes. you. Um, yes. Yeah. Don't don't get excited about about a middle of the grid start. Yeah. Unless they're be be excited by a middle of the grid finish. But you're absolutely Correct. right. As soon as you are like, okay, I have my hosses, I have my kicksobbers and all that. Hey, man, they just qualified top 10. Might actually lose a little bit. Right. Then, yeah. Yeah, you want you want your bottom feeders to start at the bottom. Yep. And then to not crash. Yeah. And that's, and that's how you win fantasy. Yep. The next and last segments that we have for today is the fantasy teams uh, review. Oh yeah, living and, uh, living and vicariously. I, and I ben. want to. Uh, I need. I feel like I need to fall on the sword. Not fall on the sword. I need to f- confess all of this. I, I kind of did in the previous segment, but I want to make sure it's very very <laughs> clear. I am well known, and I have a strong record in saying that save your three X for the right time. Save your chips for the right time. If you don't put Red Bull on your team, that's bad. You need to have Red Bull on your team. And I thought I had everything noted. And I'm like, you know what? Here is a here's a gamble. Here's a time that I can use my superior fantasy knowledge acumen. to yeah. acumen to, <laughs> to get going. And and this will work. And I did it. And it did not work. I was for a second. I was kicking myself in the pants. I was like, man, I didn't put V carb on there. How come I didn't go V carb? Look how well they qualified. No. And then I reeled myself it, back in. I'm exactly. like, no, this is. I'm, I'm. I'm glad I didn't do it. But no. If for anybody out there who's like, man, this really stinks. I tried something. I tried a weekend, and it didn't work out. Don't worry. We're all been there. I've been there. I'm here now. I thought, you know what? Here's my big. Uh, because and and here's the reason why I'm I'm feeling so make copa about this. Your primary team, your number one team, that is a team that F1 will reward you in Fantasyland for. There are prizes for doing the top in Fantasy Formula One in the Global League. And F1, will, there is a prize package for people who do well. But you only do get it with your first team. I see. So right now, if my first team is pretty much out of contention 
I was, I haven't been like in strong contention for it yet, but it was, if I use my chips right, then I can get back up in contention. But this was a the killer for you. This was a, this was a spin out. I didn't hit the wall, but I spun out and I'm go. I went from P1 down to P15 when I finished. Got it. And it's just not, not good for me. So I have the rest of my teams. I kept all the teams as fragged, doing fine. But this was a big gamble and punchline. Go ahead and take those gambles because you need to make the big moves. Oh, sure. My big move did not work out this week. Team one for me, newbie alpha. Uh, I had Charles Leclerc. He, you know, he was my two X, got me 48 total points. Not awesome. Um, I also fell for this. You know, I, I tried to upgrade a driver because I still had a few million bucks left. Mm-hmm. And Esteban Ocon, for the price, he only got me one point. One point. He's, again, Alpine, man. Just it yeah. avoid. You can work out. He's good if you just don't want to lose points, but he's so expensive at almost ten million, and that, that and that's exactly it. Because then you know, then we were t- talking before. I got both both Haas drivers thirteen and three points for probably a combined total of, of fourteen million bucks. Yeah, uh, Yuki Sonoda got me four points. It could have been worse. Yeah. Um, and then I had uh, Red Bull, uh, which as a constructor, which got me sixty one, and Ferrari fifty one for a total of one hundred and eighty one, and that is my t- my team one, which is not great. Let's see what else we've got. Team two, Red Bull Dragon Fruit. That was your. That was that one won for me, and you know why though? I I I my high my high dollar driver was Lando Norris. He got me seventy four points with two X. So I mean, he's he. This is my proof of concept here. But then again, Daniel Ricciardo. I got to stop putting my heart out there for you, man. Right. Negative two points. Then I got my Haas drivers again for, again. The, for a combined total of 16. There we go. And then Logan Sargent, negative two points. And then uh, interesting um, here, my constructors were Red Bull Racing for 61 like before, but I also had Mercedes, Mercedes which got me 54 because, you know, this was yeah. this was the strongest race so far for Mercedes. Uh, it, we had Lewis Hamilton matching his, his season best at sixth place, but then you had George Russell right behind him at seventh place. So, again, they're that middle of the pack team. They actually got you some, got you some points, which is fun yeah i almost said rare but historically they're an incredible <laughs> team so what do i know? yeah uh and then team three the state oh i'm sorry uh total for red bull dragon fruit was 201 points so that was my it's top performance top perform- yeah nicely done thank you uh and, and then i i went full uh <laughs> never go full for our never go full for <laughs> right oh. oh that's right you did it too yeah yeah so i i, uh, I went charles leclerc and carlos signs 48 points for Leclerc, 17 points for Sainz. Man. Uh, negative two for Sargent, negative two for Botas, uh, and then five points for Zogan Yu because yeah. I had spent on Kick Saber of all teams. I don't know why. Um, but then I had Ferrari for 51 points and Mercedes for 54 points for a total of 151. Um, those of you math nerds out there who were following that uh, that it should be 171 but i i actually made multiple trades over my limit oh god so I, oh, so I, you, I lost 20 points there so you even lost 20 points to try and get that good team correct that's right but again that's it's the stathams they're not yeah they're they're the they're the c team <laughs> so anyway that's how it, it was not a great uh fantasy weekend for me i hope it was better for you um do we have anything else we need to cover we don't that's it all right well, this is the part where I, uh, I I plead for for attention and ask you know if you're enjoying what you're listening to, please give us a five star review, leave a review, tell your friends about us. See you next week. Cheers.